Hello my friends, Nanny here from Nanny and the Moose. In this video, you're going to see a number of different things and a range of emotions from me. This video is going to start off with um, a, a kind of a health incident that we had over the weekend with Moose, but turned out fine. So you're gonna see me in more of an emotional situation as I tell this story. And then we're gonna talk about our cat situation. You're going to see a cameo from Moosey looking much better than he did in the last video when you saw him. I'm going to model some uh, things that I picked up at a thrift shop and my very autumnal shirt. This is one of, I love belts, even though I don't have a waist anymore. I'm a sucker for belts when I see them at the thrift shops. I had a little visit to Walmart, and I'm going to show you a bit of the run through from that. I, also, I did put on some makeup early in the morning. I not much light outside, and I wanted to discuss with you some of the little snafus I've been having with eye makeup and a change of eyeshadow for me. I hope you'll enjoy this video. Stay tuned. Good morning. <clears throat> It's six o'clock Sunday morning and I just woke up exhausted. We had quite a weekend yesterday. Uh, Moosey, as you know, has not been feeling well and at least maybe five days now and Saturday morning, probably about three, he woke up with an excruciating pain in his back and we didn't know what it was. He, he's been coughing a lot, quite a bit. Now I had been testing him for COVID twice and it was negative. We thought it was just a, a flu of some kind. And it got so bad, he said it was a 10 and he probably had to go to the emergency room. Well, we wanted to go to a hospital that was in Orange County where our daughter is the CEO of the foundation and he's been there before, but it's out of the area. And when paramedics come now, he, I couldn't take him in the car because he couldn't move. He was flat on his back. So we called one of our grandsons who's a dispatcher firefighter. We have a few firefighters in the family still. Besides our son, Bill, who's a retired captain, we have some grandsons. But they've all said, you know, there's the paramedics will only take you to the closest hospital and so forth and so on. So we finally called the local 911. Now, meanwhile, Colleen and Micah, who live in the big house on the property, who I always get help from in situations like this, we're up taking our grandson to college, getting him settled in. Actually, they're due back today. And I, I didn't know what to do. So I called the 911 number, told them it was not an emergency rushing to the hospital, but we wanted to go to a certain hospital, which was only three miles longer than the local one. Well, they came. And if this has ever happened to you, where you've had the you had to call nine one one and had paramedics and the ambulances and it's overwhelming. Well, within I would say three three to four minutes, it was still dark, and I had to go out and and we were in a tiny cottage on Colleen and Micah's property. So we're up at the top of a, a long driveway. You see me drive down the driveway and there's a gate at the end. So I, I went out right away and I pushed a button and opened the gate. And I instantly saw some flashing red lights down on the street, <clears throat> but it was quite a bit down the driveway. And I told them that they could, could bring the paramedic truck up the driveway. It was no problem. 
But I started walking down the driveway with my flashlight and all of a sudden I saw three or four flashlights with men walking up the driveway. And, and I said, it's okay, come up, come up. And I met the men in the driveway and they said, well, we have the fire engine and that's that big long hook and ladder they always bring. I said, oh no, we didn't need that. I told the woman on the phone, he said, well, we can't drive that up. I said, you don't have to, just bring the paramedic truck up. So they did. They are wonderful. They came in right away and had to start moving a few things because they brought the stretcher on the wheels because they had to take him out flat on his back. He was in such pain. But immediately they went into the bedroom and and took his vitals, started. One fellow sat out here and was writing all the vitals down and all the information. And um, I can't say enough for the the um, the lovely care. They're so uh, um, attentive and and warm and right away made Moose feel comfortable, calmed him down. Um, they realized that they couldn't move him because of the pain. So they gave him some morphine and within minutes, Moose felt fine. His vitals were, his blood oxygen was low, but he does have a, a consistent cough due to a condition that he has. But within a few minutes, and of course I was out here talking to them, and within a few minutes, they heard, took Moosey out on the stretcher through the tiny cottage. And um, I'm just so thrilled that, that it worked well and Moose did not, was not in pain. Sometimes when they would take him out, oh, you could hear the, um, you could hear the, the moans and the screams with pain. But they put him in the back of the paramedic truck and I think in the meantime, the fire engine went home, fortunately. And off they went, and Moose wanted me to come to the emergency room also and just, just be there. So we didn't know what all this was. Uh, a year ago, if you have looked way back on, I think it was late September a year ago, he had a UTI infection that we didn't realize that's what he was having. He thought he was having hip pain, and he did go into sepsis septic shock, I think they call it, right here at three in the morning. Fortunately, Colleen and Micah were here, but they came quickly and brought him to the uh, hospital and they were able right away, it's a, such a serious condition, but they were able to medicate him. Uh, he was in the hospital four or five days at that time, but um, they caught it in time. And uh, we had the wonderful people come here to the house and every day uh, give them the medication through an IV. That worked out great. So he's been through the mill, my Moosey. Well, to make a long story short, I called Dub at five in the morning to see if she could make sure someone was going to be attending him at the hospital. And, and they came in right away. Fortunately, there was hardly anyone in the emergency room, so they were able to attend to him. A couple of doctors saw him right away, took all his vitals, did some tests and x-rays, and Moosey thought he had broken a rib. There's a lot of self-diagnosing with Moosey. That doesn't always turn out that way, but he hadn't with the coughing. There was another rib that he had broken uh, one time when he fell and did break a bunch of ribs. There was a sort of semi-healed rib, evidently, from a while ago. And evidently, that's what the pain was with the the heavy coughing that was going on. So uh, other than that, uh, because his energy was low and he wasn't feeling well during that time, uh, that's why he was doing so much coughing. Well, they gave him the COVID test and, and um, he called me a couple hours later. I didn't even quite make it home. So I didn't even have a pair of pants for him to wear to come home, but they didn't admit him. Thank God um, he, he was okay to go home. The pain was gone once he relaxed and everything. And we, we really couldn't believe that this turned out so well. So I went, I picked him up, called all the kids again. Actually, Margie was the one that sent out the, 
the text to all the kids and right away all the kids were calling, you're kidding, this hasn't happened, blah, blah, blah. I'm feeling good now because he just woke up a little while ago and he feels great, thank the Lord. So, not great, but good. So we came home. Meanwhile, Matt was on his way up and he brought some sandwiches. Mosey was starved as usual. And Matt came in and visited. We were home about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. And we had a call from the doctor. And <clears throat> checking up was one of the doctors that was that had attended and The him. reason I am uh, telling you all this in my video is because so many of you have said you are so up and so chipper and so uh, positive about life that you do inspire us. But we do want to see the fact that you do have other emotions in your life, that you do have the down times, because it makes us feel, this is several of, of you people have told me this, it makes us feel that we're okay because Nanny has the same feelings and down times that we do. And I do, we both do. And our life is not perfect. And I want you all to know that sometimes you just don't want to to video those times. And, and that would be appropriate, of course. But do know that that we have our ups and downs just like you. And although we are fortunate to have this big family, to have each other, life has not always been perfect. And I'm, I wanted to tell you this story because number one, it had a good ending. And, and number two, this, this is how we handle these things. And for some reason or other, I think the good Lord gives us the stamina to be able to go through these. And I have learned a lot about myself that I am strong. I've always said that I, I like to live life or try and make life a little fairy tale. Not that it always is, sometimes. But I have learned that I can handle all those down moments. And there have been many, many down moments in our lives all throughout these years. So I hear him coughing a little bit in there right now. But let me finish, let me finish this story. Um, and, and then um, I want to attend to Moosey. Where did I leave off? So we were home about um, Matt was here visiting and Moose was feeling great and said, I can't believe that, you know, just a few hours ago, I was flat on my back feeling awful. And we get a call from the doctor checking up on him to see how he is. And he said, and I have to tell you something, he said, his COVID test came back positive. And here I had tested him with these home kits that Medicare provides. I think we can all still, I don't, I hope it's going to still go on, but these are home kits. And I do know that the home test results are not as sensitive as the ones that they give you in the clinics or the hospitals because they take longer. And as the doctor said, the tests that you get from the doctors are much more sensitive. And I said, how could that be? He hasn't been out anywhere and this is strange. I have not picked this up. He's been sick almost a week now. A lot of heavy coughing, some achiness in the beginning. We thought it was that flu because I tested him three times, even the day before all this happened. Um, and I said that to the doctor, this is discouraging. Why do they give us these tests? Because I rely on, on them. And he was negative every time I tested him during the week. He said, well, you know, they're, it's not that they're useless. It's that they're um, not as sensitive. Now he said, I know he had COVID uh, just, I think it was three and a half months ago when he, when he had COVID. And I think you know that he went through that with me. And I kept testing him all during that time. And he tested positive on these home tests. So they do work. And it was almost 10 days before he did get a negative test. And I'm telling you this only in case something like this has happened with you. He did say he could have what we call lingering COVID, 
where he he never really came out of the COVID that he had three, three and a half months ago, but um, it still showed some positivity. Could be, ace, he's been asymptomatic. I'm just happy that everything turned out all right. And I know this has gone on a little long and I know you've all gone through these situations, but um, I just wanted to do this to show you that yes, Nanny does have those times just like you. Our life is probably very similar to a lot of yours, but I do believe that we have to have hope. We have to uh, hope that, that, that everything turns out well and we have to be able to handle things. We have to stay strong. So stay strong, ladies. The good times outweigh the bad, I hope. So I have other things to tell you about to, too. We're gonna do a little bit of baking and I do have some eyewear that arrived that I wanna show you that I'm this way about. So I wanna get your opinion on it too. So. Let me go, I have my coffee that I've been drinking. The sun is up, the cats are ready to be fed, and so is Moosey. Catch you later. I thought you might like to see some of the lovely sweaters that Walmart is featuring right now. Sweaters that are three quarter length with pockets. Everything is so reasonably priced. And I thought that the knitting fabrics were beautiful. I love these sweaters, love that color, and of course I'm always very partial to cables of any kind. Guess what color I got. Look at these prices. Now there is the perfect white shirt, and it comes in stripes and black. These were knits as well for $12.98, cute little prints and some great solids. I've always loved those three quarter sweaters that ties. I'm just drawn to them and they have so many cute prints, great prices. Love these jackets. Look at that black quilt. Isn't that very designer looking, very Chanel-ish. And something you could wear in California. Good morning, it's me, Nanny again. <clears throat> Only now it's Monday morning. Yesterday was Sunday and Moosey had a good day. Everything is going well. And I just finished trying to apply my makeup in the semi-darkness here. And I wonder how we're doing. <clears throat> I did want to show you one thing that I got new that I decided to change my mind about. I have a new palette, not an expensive one, but I decided to change some colors and uh, when I was on my way home from the emergency room when Moosey was there Saturday morning, we thought maybe he'd be admitted. So I started home, but I stopped at Walmart on the way. I picked up a couple of things, including a little bit more of my e.l.f. camo concealer in a little bit of darker color, maybe a peachy. I thought I was a little too ivory looking. And a new palette. 598 Wet and Wild, and I bought it mainly for two colors, the smoky gray, a light gray, a white, and a darker gray. These two other colors are wild, so I'm not worrying about them, but I wanted to see if it came out any differently in right now in the dark. I still haven't gone into the bathroom to see. What do you think? So today I am going to show you just a few things that I have gotten. My eyeglass accessories that I promised, and I'm not going to bake those Nordic um, cakelets in the pumpkin spice until the end of the weekend. I'll probably show you in Saturday's video because we hope, fingers crossed, that uh, we're going down to San Diego and see some more grandkids for the weekend and a soccer game. So we will be out of the woods because actually Mootsie got sick about a week ago, more than a week ago. So the quarantine period would be fine. Although they think perhaps this COVID might've been lingering 
not a new COVID from three months ago. So, so I'm going to fix myself up. I'm starting <laughs> fixing myself up. I have to get my hair done and finish my face, lipstick, and we'll get on with the video. Well, I did just check on my eyes and I realized there's a couple of boo-boos as usual in there. So I am going to try and get them with this. Now that everything's dried, you ladies have told me that the way to get those little blobs here and there is with the Q-stick and it's dry. So we'll try that. First, let me get my hair up. <laughs> this thing is so easy for those times when I'm just not bothering with the hair that I just need to get it up. So let's try it. I don't happen to have a bobby pin here. Nope, not here. So we'll just leave it like that for now. Okay, now this is what I've been told to do. And I don't have glasses on, but if there's, oh, I saw something here, a little too dark. Now here, most of my problem always seems to be under the eyes or little dots up here. I do have a couple of little imperfections in the eyelids anyway that I try and cover up. But as I looked at the um, smoky gray light and dark, I liked it. What do you think? Okay, I think I fixed that. Well, it's later in the morning, <clears throat> Monday morning, and um, we've come to some conclusions on our uh, rival cat situation. Uh, my daughter Margie has agreed to take Ghost. Um, she is an animal whisperer and has um, a couple of indoor cats and uh, I think one or two dogs. She did lose her big giant Winnie a couple of months ago. And um, she has a German Shepherd that's indoor, outdoor, a sweetheart of a dog. And so I feel much better about that. The reason I made this decision was because increasingly, even over the past couple of days, Shamu ha has basically not even been staying in the vicinity of our home. She keep calling Shamu a she, but it's really a he. He is neutered. He was neutered, fixed, shots, vaccinations, everything. Uh, that started years and years ago. As I told you, I've had him for many, many, many years. And he is has such anxiety now from this cat because uh, he he was fine about taking care of himself when he was the, the only male cat around here. But um, he doesn't even come to see me. And I'm afraid, as several of you suggested, that um, Ghost might eventually, with his aggressiveness, chase Shamu from the property and Shamu would leave. And when I go out in the morning, Shamu isn't even around. Usually she used to sleep on the patio, on the cushions, and um, I, I haven't even been able to pick her up to bring her inside, which she has been agreeing to. She likes it lately. Normally she was a little claustrophobic about staying inside, but now she knows it's her safe place in here. And when I go to try and pick her up, um, Ghost will race toward me and um, the cat will jump out of my arms and run. So it's not a good situation. So I think that is going to help everything. So within the next day or two, hopefully Margie's husband will help us. I do have a, <clears throat> a transport cage that we can transport them in because we've had terrible situations with the raccoons, I've told you that. So we'll transport him up to Margie's and we can all relax. And poor Shamo can get back to knowing that this is her home, that we love her, and that she is doesn't have to be afraid to, to stay here. So that's that. So as you can see, I have my fall shirt on, except that we're in the middle of another heat wave here in California. This is crazy, but it started yesterday up in the high 90s, 
and um, hopefully by the end of the week it's going to start going down into the 80s and then hopefully down into the beautiful 70s which are so comfortable. Now right now my Moosey is shaving and he is going to make an appearance and let you know that he is well and happy and back on the mend. Uh, the COVID situation is the craziest thing because every time I test him on my home kits, he tests negative. Meanwhile, I'm still fine, knock on wood. I am going to model this outfit right back here against my, my white little scalloped quilt. Good morning, you look chipper. Do I look like I'm under the weather? <laughs> You're definitely out from under the weather. You know, when you're, when you're not under the weather, you're full of the other thing they used to say, pee and vinegar. Piss and vinegar. Huh? Yeah, piss and vinegar, right? Oh, did you say piss? Oh, I did. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm on top of it again. There was just nothing wrong with me except da -da, a lingering COVID, which doesn't make me feel bad today, but was making me feel bad about six Six years, six years, six weeks, six. six You're losing days time, ago. losing track of time. Six days ago, <laughs> but I'm totally clear now, full of energy, ready to go. You look great, thank you God. Know, am was... I supposed to look autumnal? <laughs> yeah, the candle makes you look autumnal. Well, it's Dodger time, so whatever. Oh, that's right. Well, you looked good, thank God, all is well. Hi, I know you guys all thought I was under the weather, and maybe I was. But I'm not now. Thank you for thinking of me. Bye. Now, remember I told you I was going to share what I found on Amazon relating to eyeglasses. Well, let me show you. Now, first I'm going to take off my earrings because this is, in a way, a form of jewelry. It's quite unusual, but... We'll see. Now, as you can tell and you have seen, I do take my glasses on and off quite a bit. And they are a form of tortoiseshell. Now, I'm sure you're all familiar with uh, what they call eyeglass chains for those that keep taking glasses on and off. And many of you maybe wear readers um, or maybe regular glasses. With me, mine come on and off quite a bit. Now, I know they're unusual. I saw them on another YouTube creator, a very fancy woman, European woman, and she had something similar to these. They were Italian made, very expensive, and the actual chain was a quite a bit larger and it was lighter. It could have been abalone or something, but they were very expensive and I loved the look of them. So I went searching on Amazon. I found a lot of those skinny ones that's just a normal chain or some with some tiny beads, but we've all seen those and I didn't want those. I wanted something similar to that, but I didn't want to pay a lot of money. So I found these and I'm going to put this on and I want you now I am still this way about them, but they are a form of jewelry. Now, this is how you would wear them. What do you think? I mean, they're different, that's for sure. Oh no, wait, I have them on wrong. Hang on, <laughs> Moosey's laughing. Of course, another nanny snafu or whatever you want to call them, start calling them. This is getting to be, um, getting to worry me. Okay, now I'm okay. Now this is what they'd look like hanging around my neck. Do you see that? And they're pretty this way, aren't they? And normally it would almost be like a necklace with your glasses here. When I put them on, now this, this time I'll put them on the right way, right? This is what they look like. Now they look better, don't they? <laughs> what do you think? They match the glasses. I, I kind of think they're unusual and, and they're kind of sporty, so at any rate, I will leave down in the description box below, I will leave the information if you want to order a pair. They're $9.99. Now, I saw these first and ordered them. And then 
I happened to see from the same uh, supplier, another pair. Now they do send little extra, the little uh, loops on the end and uh, some little clips too. They do send those with you. But I saw these as well, the same thing. Uh, as I said, I'm not interested in, in wearing anything skinny or uh, plain chain, but I found them also in the tortoise shell, but a lighter color. And these are quite nice too. Of course, you wouldn't wear them like that. But you could also wear this as a necklace if you didn't want to wear it that way. I think it makes a great different type of a necklace. And there are hooks that you can put this together to put over your head and use as a necklace. But, so that's this. And tell me what you think of them. I thought they were unusual and that's why I like them. And now, one of the last things I'm going to do in this video, I'm saving all the cooking for one of the next videos, it, because we can bring uh, those little cakelets with us when we visit the grandkids over the weekend. So um, I'll show you this outfit, I'll model it. And this is a top, that beautiful fall top that I bought a year ago at Big Lots. They might have them again this year, you might wanna try. I thought it was darling. Now I've paired it with uh, a blouse that I have and uh, a pencil skirt in an olive green that I also found at the thrift shop. I think I paid five or seven dollars for it and has two little small slits on the sides. I'm becoming very fond of these pencil ones. This one is not uh, a heavy winter knit. It's a t-shirt knit, stretchy. And I think they're very slimming and I love the look of them as an alternative to pants, to try and get out of the pants for a while. The shirt is darling. I've rolled up the sleeves and I have the, tea, the uh, blouse underneath. Try picking up some of these skirts. They're available on Amazon or in the stores. They have the little slit at the bottom and I love the length. I do prefer the longer length because I do think it's slimming. So that's my fall outfit on still a very hot autumnal day. So that's all my news for this video. And I'll do, um, I'll do the cooking. I still have two great recipes. I have this great breakfast that um, came to me from Dub. And then I have those Nordic Ware cakelets that I'm going to be making with a pumpkin spice mix and I'll be bringing them to when we visit grandkids this weekend. So thank you for all of you for all your concerns about Moosey when you saw him in the last video then he was under the weather and I guess he was for a while but mm. thank the Lord he's fine now and exercising again and will be up and out again before we know it. Thank you so much for enjoying our videos. Welcome to all our new subscribers. I'm glad you're joining our family. We'll see you real soon. Bye for now. I love you all and God bless us all.